Thank you, Madam Zoom. Okay, uh, we, we appear to have quorum. Uh, Rachel, could you do the honors and, and start us off? Yes, we do have quorum and notice was sent to all the list serves and to our posted on our website. Okay, thank you. Now we move to approval of the agenda. Uh, commissioners, are there any proposed changes to the agenda? Chair Finley, I would like to move um, the resolution for the Safe, Sustainable, and Equitable Transportation Committee to the consent calendar. Okay. Commissioners, is there any objection to doing so? No. Okay. Okay. All right. That is moved. Or rather, is there a second first? I'll second. Thank you. And, and now is there any objection? I believe it's still no. Okay, so the consideration of resolution to form a safe and sustainable transportation committee and Commissioner Siddiqui, I apologize, I believe you also uh, include the word equity in there. Uh, it will be, it is now in the agenda as on the consent calendar and we are moving on to community forum. This is where members of the public are invited to ask questions and raise concerns about issues that are not otherwise on the agenda. Uh, I ask that if you would like to make a comment during community forum, that you choose the raise hand feature. Uh, I believe that is in reactions, uh, which if you are on a computer is in the bottom right uh, next to the leave meeting button. There's a little smiley face with a plus sign. You click that and choose raise hand and then we'll call on you. And that's how we'll proceed for discussion, public discussion too throughout the meeting. Okay, seeing none, uh, consent calendar has been addressed and approved as the agenda. We now move on to commission business. Uh, we have consideration of ANC endorsement of Commissioner McWood's response to Washington International School's post-hearing submission to the BZA, case number 20458. Uh, Commissioner McWood, do you wanna get started with that? Start by unmuting. Um... If it'd be uh, um, appropriate and agreeable to the chair, I'd like to just go ahead and read the resolution because I think it kind of lays it out and then we can go from there. Sounds That's good. All right. Yeah. Okay. Um, whereas the DC Board of Zoning Adjustment, BZA, decided to keep the record opening case number 20458 involving the Washington International Schools application for a special exception for the limited purpose of receiving a post-hearing statement from the applicant on compliance with the conditions of past zoning orders and the ANC 3C's response to that submission. And whereas the BZA initially did not ask ANC 3C Commissioner McWood, who was authorized to represent the ANC on the matter to seek additional ANC support for a response, but later determined that ANC consideration was necessary for the response to receive great weight and whereas the response focused partly on two of the 12 conditions in BZA order number 17560 dated March 8, 2007, <clears throat> that required the maintenance of an ongoing liaison with the community of the type contemplated by a written agreement with Friends of Turgarin and for the community liaison to have access to annual data showing the total number of staff and faculty in January of each year. And whereas the applicant's post-hearing submission stated that the Turgarin Conservancy served as the ongoing liaison with the community and that the Conservancy receives the staff and faculty counts each year. And whereas the reference written agreement with Friends of Turgarin, a group of neighbors organized in part to liaison with the school was an April 28, 2005 agreement among the Washington International School Friends of Dragaran and ANC 3C09. It covered zoning limits on number of students and faculty and staff, discouragement of school-related parking on Macomb Street, traffic control at the, the school's Macomb Street entrance, number of events, and mitigation on the neighborhood, uh, neighborhood impacts, on-site parking spaces, and mitigation of light effects on the neighborhood, the creation of a neighborhood construction liaison committee to preview construction activities and resolve objectionable conditions related to the construction 
construction, a timeline for sharing lists of scheduled activities and events, numbers of students, faculty, staff, and the process for the Friends of Tregaren to address and resolve concerns with the school. All topics of ongoing interest and concern in the neighborhood that the Friends of Tregaren sought to address. And whereas a subsequent agreement entered into in February 2006 among the Washington International School Friends of Tregaren and Tregaren Limited Partnership, uh, which was a private owner, which was the private owner of a portion of Tregaren, that agreement outlined how long-standing opposition to the private development of 14 acres of the Tregaren Historic Landmark property would be resolved with the distribution of the 14 acres to the school and to a new conservancy entity that would own, rehabilitate, maintain, and operate the conserved land in order to preserve its significance as a historic designed landscape. And whereas the Articles of Incorporation for the Tregaren Conservancy state its purpose is to operate exclusively for charitable and educational purposes, including but not limited to promoting the re habilitation, preservation, and maintenance of the historic landscape, commonly known as the Tregaren Estate for the use by and education of the general public. And whereas the Articles of Incorporation provide at section 15, that if two thirds of the Conservancy Board of Directors votes affirmatively, it may engage in activities not directly relating to rehabil rehabilitating, preserving, and maintaining the Tregaren Estate. But at section section 15.7 B and C, there is a stipulation that any proposed engagement that would materially restrict or interfere with Washington International School from using its property in the manner and for the purposes the Washington International School is organized and operated can only be undertaken if the two thirds affirmative board vote includes all the board members appointed by the school. And whereas the Conservancy Board has not initiated any activity such as forming a neighborhood liaison committee or meeting with neighborhood residents on school related concerns that would require a vote of its board of directors in compliance with section 15 of its articles. But further and importantly, the zoning commission applies to the school not the conservancy and requires the school to maintain a liaison group and the school has no authority to determine the activities of or maintain the Tregaren Conservancy, which is an independent body controlled by a board of directors. And whereas understanding the above, Commissioner McWood commented to the BZA that Tregaren Conservancy's mission did not permit it to be an ongoing representative of the neighborhood as Friends of Tregaren had been on matters related to the school and thus condition five of the previous zoning order had not been implemented since no neighborhood liaison had been created or was being maintained by the school. And whereas Commissioner McWood added that condition six had also not been met since there was no community liaison group receiving information about annual numbers of students and faculty and staff. And whereas Commissioner McWood stated the condition number seven requiring the development and implementation of a traffic management plan presumed that the school would implement a student car ID to be displayed in or on student cars parked on Macomb Street as ANC 3C had recommended and as the head of school and the school's council testified would be implemented as part of the TMP whether included as a condition or not. Commissioner McWood's submission included relevant sections of the hearing transcript that showed the BZA members relied on the assertions of the school representatives that they would implement the ID requirement as part of the TMP and that no condition was necessary to guarantee its implementation. But in fact, it has not been implemented. Be it resolved that ANC 3C agrees with the conclusions of Commissioner McWood based on the series of whereas provisions in this resolution and endorses her June 21 2021 post-hearing submission to the BZA. Be it resolved, the Chair and Commissioner McWood, uh, ANC 3C09, are authorized to represent the Commission on this matter. Is there a second? Resolution. Thank you, Commissioner Wood. Is there a second? Sure, I'll second. Thank you, Commissioner Siddiqui. Uh, commissioners, any discussion on the matter? Um, is it okay if I start since I seconded? 
yes, it, it is. Um, thank you, Commissioner McWood. Uh, so I, I actually want some background on this because I think I want to I want to raise this issue and I want us to talk about it and just get agreement on what, you know, kind of what we need to do in this and what was asked. Um, so the BZA hearing, I believe um, the the chairman said that, uh, you know, there was there would be they kind of wanted comment from the ANC. And I think you and him both sort of said that not sort of both of both of you said that like well some of this stuff goes beyond the initial resolution that was passed so it's hard to just speak on behalf of that and then there's some confusion about you know what what happened later but the chairman said the the record will stay open and the ANC can comment and then you the letter that you wrote this was sent by you to them but it was sent on the ANC letterhead mm -hmm. did does did that mean that it came from the ANC or did you mean that it came from you? Uh, my intention was that it came from the ANC. Um, for the many years that I've been a commissioner and that I've testified before the BZA, when a commissioner is authorized to be by the BZA or by the ANC to represent them on a particular matter, it means everything associated with that matter because questions come up at the hearing. There are lots of things that happen. Uh, additional submissions are, are requested. Um, and in my experience, um, that has never required a commissioner to go back to the ANC to ask for additional authorization. Um, and that's wherein there was confusion. Um, and in fact, I even asked the chair at the hearing because I was uncertain because of some of the things that he was saying. Um, and let me add that when you're listening to this, when this is happening uh, spontaneously, um, uh, the, the dialogue isn't as crisp, quite frankly, as it is when you read a transcript. But nonetheless, I asked him, I explained to him that we were having our June meeting within I think five days or four days of that hearing. Um, and that if you wanted me to go back and get additional, and he said, no, you know, we don't want to go through another cycle of the ANC. Anyway, uh, I, I'm not sure what his intent was, but my interpretation was, okay, this is business as usual. This is what it has always been. You just, I'm representing the ANC on this matter and, um, and, and that's what I should do. So yes, I signed it as a representative of the ANC on, on that matter um, and used the letterhead, which, which I thought was appropriate. Um, and I also submitted it to all the commissioners in, at the same time that I was submitting it to the BZA. So, so that was, um, therein lied the, the confusion. And then at the meeting, which is when the uh, BZA was scheduled to make its decision, uh, they postponed that decision, entered into a conversation about whether the submission from me was on behalf of the ANC or whether it was on behalf of my SMD. And without their, their conclusion was that without additional consideration by the ANC, it was an SMD comment. So that's, that's why we're here. Yeah, no, I mean, and, and, you know, and, and, and I can, I can definitely relate to like, you know, confusion and stuff like that. However, I mean, maybe this is something we should talk about that even if I'm, a, I'm, all, I never send anything on the ANC letterhead until all of us have seen it. And, and, and Commissioner McCord, I raised that issue to you right away when you had emailed that to us. Um, yeah. You know, I was, I was very worried. I was like, oh no. Um, and, and the BZA kind of, you know, it, it seemed, and again, you know, I think, I think that to me was a little worrisome. Like if, if this was normal protocol, then clearly the BZA didn't think so. Um, so I don't know if this is part of today's conversation or some other conversation about sending stuff on ANC letterheads. I mean, I never do that. And I feel like if I ever did, even if it was related to a resolution, I would send it to you all first before sending it on. Uh, it, it, it has been past, past practice that, um, a, that ANC commissioners in 3C uh, can use the letterhead, quite frankly, 
Um, I, I follow your protocol. I never use the ANC uh, letterhead for, for individual SMD uh, communications. I thought in this case, I was representing the ANC since I had been authorized on this matter to be representing the ANC. Um, commissioners have in fact sent communications on their own behalf to the BZA in other cases. Um, the Macklin case, for example, several commissioners wrote and submitted comments um, and I believe used, used the letterhead uh, and none of us complained about that. But that certainly is something that um, if, because we've, we've, we've got a fairly new board. So if there are, uh, I mean, it would be up to the chair to decide, but I, I think that's certainly a conversation we could have if this okay. particular group of commissioners wants to handle that differently. Let me just interject real quick. Uh, past practice seems to have been, you can use ANC letterhead if you're writing on behalf of your own SMD, so long as you make that very clear. And so when I do it, I write it in the first line or in the, in the second line, it's always in the first paragraph. I know uh, there's a prior commissioner last term who would do it in a footnote to the first sentence. Uh, and so that it's just so you make it clear, um, that's sort of been the past practice. If you're going to use GNC letterhead to write on behalf of your own single member district. But Commissioner McWood, you pointed out that you were writing on behalf of the commission based on, yeah, okay. So other, sorry, sorry, Commissioner. So just one follow up just to finish. So, so Commissioner McWood, in your opinion, then if you were writing on behalf of the commission, that means that whatever's in your letter is related to the previous resolution we passed, right? Doesn't go beyond the previous resolution? No, it's, 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 no, it's responsive to what the, uh, to what the BZA chair requested, which was a post hearing submission from the applicant as to whether they were complying with the conditions of previous zoning orders. And he wanted, his request was that the ANC respond to that submission to what what the applicant was writing in that submission. And so that's, and, th and there actually were about five documents, I believe that were submitted. Um, and in my judgment, uh, the only one that I felt uh, we should actually respond to uh, was the one on the zoning, the conditions to the last zoning order. And then there were about 12 conditions and there were only three of those 12 that I felt um, we should respond I and, provide, and provide additional information for the BCA. You know, the BCA will decide to do whatever it wants to do. Okay, thank you, Commissioner McQueen, Commissioner Siddiqui. Uh, Commissioner Reba. Uh, thank you, Chair Finley. If I may, um, is it appropriate to ask if we can, um, finish this discussion in executive session and not take up the time of tonight's meeting because I think there would be a healthy, fruitful debate on when and when not to use commission letterhead. Um, I know that uh, we've used it particularly, as we all know, our resolutions end with uh, that a particular SMD commissioner or the chair may speak on a particular matter. And let's be honest, as an official body of the government of the District of Columbia, when working with agencies who may have different staff members join, and there's a lot of staff that bounce from agency to agency, new people come on board. Um, it's important to use official letterhead so they know that uh, uh, in whom they're speaking with. And it also illustrates who has the authority to speak on a particular matter. I think at this point, we really are debating on if this is a citywide issue or a zoning issue that's not the same as an SMD issue that now we wanna change the rules on when to use letterhead if it's a single member district issue versus an issue at large. So, I mean, I could get in, I could ask the question now that tonight we're gonna to be passing a resolution on police reform does that mean Commissioner Siddiqui won't be able to use commission letterhead because this is not an SMD issue, it's a 3C issue. So if he gets asked questions, he can't respond accordingly. So again, I think there's a larger conversation to be had. 
which I think we should take this offline or in executive session so we can move tonight's agenda forward because I believe clarity needs to be had so we can be better represented with the rep with the agencies that we do business with on a daily basis. So thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Reba. Um, yeah, I think the debate on to letterhead or not to letterhead can be covered uh, separately, but I think the question of whether Commissioner McWood's letter went beyond what the ANC considered uh, is, is still at issue. Well, I realize that, but tonight is not a judicial hearing. Um, Commissioner McWood responded uh, accordingly as she felt best due to the ambiguity of uh, what was happening. So now we just have to act on uh, the resolve. I don't think that Commissioner McWood is before a judicial hearing. I mean, this is not about admonishing her for her actions, but how do we move forward and address this issue on, regarding the letterhead on the back end? That's all. Yeah, it's, it's absolutely not about admonishment or anything like that. Um, do any other commissioners have anything to say? Any more discussion? Okay. Uh, hearing none, we'll move on to uh, public comment. And I think we'll start with the applicant. I believe Ms. Carolyn Brown is the- Oh, wait, sorry, sorry. Oh. I was trying to unmute. I'm at the oh. airport. I just picked up my bag. <laughs> Thank you, Commissioner Baggett. Okay, go for it. Um, yeah, I just had a few questions about, it seems like a lot of this is new stuff that should have came up um, in the past resolution if we were going to address it, especially the one about how we resolved that the parking wasn't an issue and now all of a sudden it seems like it is again in this version is that well, is that is that a question yes um okay the um the reason all of this came up is because the bza chair made a specific request and asked that the applicant um, specifically uh, address each of the conditions in past orders um, and uh, describe how they were complying with uh, the conditions of the zoning order and then asked the ANC to um, comment on what the applicant said. Um, so it couldn't have been anticipated that we were going to be asked to do this previously. Okay, Commissioner Packets, do you have any follow-up questions? Yeah, um, the previous zoning order didn't say that they were required to have parking stickers that identify themselves as students if they had RPP. And the chair, the BZA chair said that that's beyond their powers to do that. And it seems like that's still an ask in there. The, um, well, it's, it's not that, I don't believe it's beyond their powers. There are other schools that have such conditions in, um, in zoning orders. Um, I, I provided transcript from the, uh, that earlier, um, the 2007 case that resulted in those conditions. Uh, provided transcript of the um, uh, the testimony from from the school, uh, a different head at that time, um, and also from the school's attorney. Um, they were very they were very candid and straightforward, and um, uh, they they said unequivocally that they agreed with the ANC recommendation at the time, which was that there be student ID placards on, on cars so that when they were parked in the neighborhood, uh, they could be easily identified as associated with um, a WIS student driver. Um, and they, they both said, both the council and the head of school said, we have absolutely no problem with this. We think it's reasonable. I mean, you all have seen the transcript because I shared it with you all. Um, uh, and then there was a dialogue among several of the BZA members because they were going to require a tra traffic management plan as a condition of the order, whether they would include the student placards in that um, as part of that, that TMP condition. 
Um, and the BZA, several BZA members said, well, we don't really think it's necessary because they're going to do it anyway. They said they're going to make it part of the TMP. Uh, so we don't need to make it redundant and stick it in there. Um, so that, that was the basis for that. Uh, so the, there was reliance that the ANC recommendation would be implemented uh, voluntarily by, by the school and therefore the BZA relying on that decided that they didn't need to include that as a condition. So um, since the school in its post-hearing submission uh, stated that they were in full compliance with the traffic management plan, I thought it was important as the ANC representative to point out that something we had requested previously and that we thought was going to be implemented as part of the TMP had not. Okay. I mean, I, I listened to the last one and read the transcript too, and he kind of laughed that off as like, we don't have that kind of power to require people who are legally allowed to park here under RPP to like identify as something other or like not allow them to park in that area where they're legally allowed to park otherwise. Yeah, he, he, he did say that you're quite, you're quite right. Um, yeah, but that wasn't a discussion among the, um, among the members of the BZA. That was, that was the chair uh, voicing um, an opinion in real time based on that, based on that uh, uh, comment. That, that's still, to me, they, they, they could well decide that that is absent, that they all agree with that comment. Uh, but I felt that it, was, that it was important to raise it as the ANC representative because it was something that the ANC had recommended and that, and that we thought was gonna be implemented. That's all. Okay, thank you, Commissioners McWood and Paggins. Uh, any other commissioners have questions? And Commissioner Paggins, yes, I'm sorry, I don't mean to cut you off. If you have further questions, please, or further discussion, same to you, Commissioner McWood, uh, please continue. Uh, otherwise, if we have any other commissioners, do you have anything to say? Okay. So without further ado, we'll move to public comment. I think we should, as I mentioned earlier, we should start with the applicant first. I see Ms. Brown here, who I am pretty sure is the representative of the applicant. And I see Ms. Um, Yemsby here as well. I'm going to ask you both to unmute and uh, if you'd like to speak now and then we'll move to, uh, to more public comment. Hi, good evening, Carolyn Brown uh, on behalf of the Washington International School. Just a couple comments. Um, I noticed, um, I note that in the um, proposed resolution by Ms. McWood, she identifies the 2005 agreement than the 2006 agreement. I would note that the sequence of events is that following the 20, 2006 agreement, um, the BZA held their hearing in February of 2007, a full year later. So if there were any issues with how this committee or the conservancy was being operated as a liaison for the community, that would have been the time to raise that issue, not you know, 20 years later, 15 years later. So the fact that it's a post hoc evaluation of this order, when in fact, there was the opportunity in 2007 to raise this issue, I think that that um, really needs to be considered by the ANC that this, and in our uh, submission to the BZA, it's exhibit uh, 112A in responding to the, uh, the submission by Ms. McWood, we clearly state that we are in compliance with, the, um, with all the conditions of the order. And, and it's you know, disheartening to hear that someone raises at the 11th hour an, an objection that we are not in compliance. That should have been addressed during the hearing, the ANC review of this current order, if there was an issue, and to have it raised at such a late date is really um, disconcerting to us. But ultimately, we are in full compliance with the BZA conditions that are currently in place. Whether those are the same conditions going forward uh, remains to be seen by, by the board when they meet on Wednesday to actually decide the issue. 
And I will note also with the idea that um, for student registration of cars, in addition to the fact that it is certainly wasn't a condition and the fact that Mr. Um, uh, Griffiths, the chair of the uh, Bézier at the time talked about, we can't have an RPP condition for these uh, schools or that he didn't agree with it. I think the absence of a condition in the order speaks to the fact that the rest of the board members did agree with his assessment. Um, nevertheless, um, there is also a security concern about having student vehicles identified on the street. It raises, uh, you know, safety issues of people stalking um, student cars, and we just don't think that that's a very uh, good idea. But ultimately, I we still disagree with the um, submission of Miss McWood. I we don't believe that the school is in any way in non-compliance with the uh, BZA order that was issued in 2007. And uh, we would urge the ANC not to adopt the current resolution before you. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Brown. Uh, Ms. Yemsby, did you have anything to add to that? Thank you, Bo. I would just say, look, um... <laughs> We have never heard anything from, from Nancy on non-compliance on this issue. And that, that's deeply troubling to me that we have not been complying with what's going on. And from, from Nancy or from the neighborhood itself, it's just, you know, we haven't, we haven't heard from that uh, on that front. Um, so I'll just say that, thank you. Okay, well, I, I assume, I mean, we heard at our, I believe our April meeting about non-compliance regarding the guard tower. Um, oh, hold on, I'm, I'm meeting, oh, sorry, I'm trying to unmute you. Okay. I think we've, we've um, been both on who can unmute him. And look, you're right, uh, the un, the uh, the IDing of student vehicles is a is contentious issue. I, I prefer it not to be something that one could you know, tied to a specific vehicle because that's scary. We don't want students to be able to be identified in the neighborhood, and um, that that seems unright. You know, it's not it's not right for me. Um, so we we do have that one contentious issue, but at the end of the day, uh, we need to be able to uh, control the kids and the and the things that are around us uh, in a neighborhood. And we feel good that this plan and the 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 new building will allow us to do that. Okay, thank you. Commissioner McWood, did you have a brief response? Yeah, I'd like, I'd like to respond um, uh, primarily to what Ms. Ms. Brown said. Um, the, there was no opportunity to raise this issue until the BZA uh, requested it. Uh, the BZA um, asked specifically at the very end of the hearing um, ask the applicant to file additional uh, statements about compliance with the zoning order and the, uh, the conditions of the zoning order. And quite frankly, I hadn't looked at the 2007 um, zoning order conditions for for some time. So this is not something that that uh, I or the ANC was raising at the 11th hour. This is what we were asked to do. And we were asked to do it, frankly, at the 11th hour. Um, I, I don't know whether the applicant thought the BZA was going to make that request to them or not, but I certainly wasn't uh, uh, anticipating that they were going to make that request. So um, in terms of timing, the, the timing is what it is based on the request. Um, the, the, the other comment that I believe Ms. Brown made was that there was an opportunity to raise the issue about a liaison committee um, during the hearing in 2007. Um, there had, the very fact that there was a condition in the 2007 order um, demonstrates that the BZA uh, anticipated a liaison group was going to be created after the 2007 um, case. Um, that's why it was put into in, in, into condition of that particular order. So 
this wasn't something that the BZA thought was going to be created in 2005 or 2006 or even early in 2007. It was something that they that they inserted into the 2007 order so that subsequently such a such a body could be created. And as far as the, the parking thing, um, I, I take Ms. Jemsey's, Jemsey's comments uh, quite seriously about security issues. And I, I think we need to understand what the process here would be, uh, which is um, what, what is compliance with the zoning orders and not, which is not asking us to judge whether those conditions are currently um, reasonable and responsible. What it's asking us is, these are the conditions um, and are they being complied with or are they not being complied with? If they are not being complied with, what I would anticipate is that the BZA will have a discussion with, with the school, with the applicant and say, why not? Is there some issue here? Is there a problem? Is there uh, some reason why you are not complying with this. And the BZA is fully capable of revising these conditions in the current order. So the opportunity for the school to go back to the BZA and explain um, some of the comments that, that Ms. Yemsby just made uh, is, um, will, be, will be their right to do. And that, that would be the process. It's not up to the ANC to decide that we're going to overrule those conditions. It's our role is simply to say, are they being complied with or are they not? That's what we were asked to do. So Nancy, if I, if I could just say one thing here, it, it's, you know, I feel like if there's one person on the call who's responsible for student safety, it would be me. And uh, I just worry that we we're, we're underthinking this we often overthink things and this is an underthinking event we have students who leave their who leave school they go to their car and for whatever reason the car is identified as a whisk car they might get into the car and somebody has decided to stand outside that car because they have nefarious uh you know actions to to i don't know it doesn't feel right to me um no other school is having to actually identify their car in in the neighborhood and uh if they are in my mind it's, it's, it's a dangerous thing to do because uh kids are leaving school they're 16 17 18 god forbid something would happen to them close to the school because they have identified their car it doesn't feel right to me i'm just going to say that out but loud but that is the sort of thing that should be said to the BZA. It should be said to the, the, the BZA that the school feels that, that what might have been appropriate in 2007 is not appropriate in, in 2021. Um, that's, that, that's not for us to, to and make exactly, that judgment. And that's exactly what we have said to the BZA. Thank you, Nancy, for that, for that because we have exactly said that to the, to the BZA. So uh, I would like to uh, get the public comment, uh, if that's okay with public wishers. Um, and so uh, I talked briefly about how to do so, how to raise your hand. Next, if I, though all of us have been on Zoom for over a year now, we're not all experts, I understand. I still am learning new things about Zoom. But the reactions button is uh, next to the leave meeting button. It's got a little smiley face and a plus sign. You can click that and choose raise hand. And then uh, I see Bonnie is an expert. And uh, Bonnie will be our, our first speaker. Um, what will happen is uh, I'll ask the speaker to unmute, and uh, then they will a little thing will pop up saying the host has asked you to unmute. You click that, and uh, then you'll be able to uh, to speak. So thank you, Bonnie. You're up. Great. There we go. Thank you very much. Thank you, commissioners. And as I said in my letter to you, uh, I really appreciate all your time and your serious consideration of this. And I know are long hours and you're unpaid and um, I thank you for your public service. Uh, I, I, I hope you've got my letter. I think you've heard from at least uh, 12 neighbors about this um, and we're taking this very seriously. Uh, we were at the BZA hearing and, um, and first of all, we in, endorse um, 
uh, Commissioner McWood's post-hearing submissions. We all heard Chair Hill ask for them very specifically, and Nancy was very careful in addressing how she was going to answer them, and everything she said was in keeping. And then she also went through the the record of 2007 hearing and the transcripts. And I was at that hearing because um, I was the uh, the executive director of the uh, Trader and Conservancy from 2006 when I founded it until 2015. And to the point about why wasn't Trader and Conservancy asked to be the neighborhood liaison, they actually did form a different neighborhood liaison, not the Trader and Conservancy to uh, work on the, um, the soccer field construction project. And it was a very, amicable and Dick Hall was the head of school and we worked together very well and we had a construction management agreement which we really desperately need for this project. And so that was the neighborhood liaison committee that was disbanded after that construction project was done. So I don't think you can see the Trucaren Conservancy as the neighborhood liaison because as we said, all of us, and they have a financial interest in this. They have a legal contract with WIS, they're required to appear in front of everybody at ARC, ANC, HPRB, BZA, to, um, to support the development projects of the school. So that's not representing the community necessarily or the neighborhood. Um, but to some other, other points uh, that were made tonight, um, you know, um, I think that uh, I brought it up in my letter to the BZA in early June that how the school is out of compliance because I found the 2007 order that like Nancy was saying, we weren't really focused on, but now we're in front of the BZA for the first time in you know 14 years. And they said they would have an alternative transportation modes. They do not, the campus uh, transportation coordinator, they suddenly named Del Temple, whom I know well, but I've never once seen him on the street. And I work out of my house and I look at the entrance all day long. Um, they would have a good morning drop off and after school pick up and they would never have their parents pick up the students on Macomb Street, which they do all the time. It's a parking lot and that they would provide one way treatment of the street all the time, which they don't. And I have photos. I'm not going to bother you with that tonight. But so I would say that we argued that they're not in compliance. And for um, the head of school to say that they've never heard us complain. We have been talking about this for years, pretty much since she started as head of school and actually even before her with Clayton Lewis about these problems. And so it's, it's, uh, it's, it is odd, I guess, to be nice to say that she hasn't heard us complaining because there's been dozens and dozens of us talking about this for many years. And, and her predecessor, Dick Hall, did promise, I was there at the hearing, you've seen the transcript, he promised to do these things. And the BZA said, okay, you've promised, you're gonna do this about the parking and about the placards, you're gonna do all these things. So we're not gonna put, we're gonna rely on you. So we're not gonna put it into the BZA order. And so I think that, you know, this ANC should really think about this. And then finally, we really need a construction management agreement. All the other schools do it. The library, everybody does this. And right now there isn't one in place. And you know, the traffic is horrible on Macomb Street. And with and they now plan to have the construction trucks go in and out of Macomb Street, which has never been done before. The school traffic is gonna go in Macomb Street. You're gonna have John Eaton coming back. Uh, and as you've heard from many, many, many neighbors, it's just, it's in suffer it's a, it's a nightmare. And it's dangerous because of the emergency, it's a designated emergency vehicle, Macomb Street is. And so I think I think the BZA needs, I mean, you need to tell the BZA or you should require a construction management agreement. I think Nancy, uh, Commissioner McWood and Carolyn Brown were quite close to one in April and it got kind of tabled for whatever reason. But I really feel that you, as uh, to re represent and protect this neighborhood that our commissioners should require this. And I think you should even ask the BZA to postpone their hearing, their decision in two days, because they need to take in. This is a lot that has happened. And they need to bring this into, you know, and think about requiring a construction management. Everybody else does it. Other schools comply with BZA uh, orders. And WIS is very, very bad about compliance, as we've talked about with the guardhouse that's been put up despite the HPRB telling them twice they couldn't do it. And they've had a park now up on their campus and head of school has said she's gonna bring it back when school starts again. So we don't have much faith in the compliance or the honesty and there's no interaction with the neighborhood or community. 
So thank you for your time. And I would really, the construction management agreement is essential. Thank you. Thank you, Bonnie. So uh, in the interest of time, because we do have a, a, a very important resolution after this important resolution, uh, in keeping with past commission practice, uh, I'm going to ask that if you are going to uh, echo Bonnie's points, uh, that um, you feel free to say so in the chat uh, so that we can move back to commission discussion of the resolution at hand. That being said, uh, Arlene, <clears throat> you are, I'm going to ask you to unmute. Yes, thank you so much. I also want to, I, I do uh, want to uh, associate myself with Bonnie Lepard's comments. Um, and I also want to thank you for listening to the neighborhood. We appreciate your service and the fact that you're doing all this on an unpaid basis. You're working very hard. Um, as to the, li uh, the, the liaison group, I, I believe at the time that the, the Tregaron Conservancy was started, there was a hope it would be a community liaison. It has turned out not to be for the reasons that Bonnie spelled out. They're contractually obligated to uh, support the school's plans. And indeed they have never, announced in any of their materials, announced anything about the school's plans to build on Tregaron. They've said nothing. And when I've addressed them personally about this, um, I, I have I've never heard back. Um, I, I, I think it would be wonderful if the ANC would ask for postponement so that we could have additional time. Um, some neighborhood concerns that I think have come into focus just in the last few days are the really horrendous situation that we are facing with this construction. Many, many trucks are going to be entering and departing the, the school down that narrow driveway and, and out Macomb Street. Now, this is going to pose huge safety problems, both for pedestrians, for cars, for fire trucks, for ambulances that routinely use Macomb Street. Now, even with the, with the construction at John Eaton almost complete, it is sometimes impassable. It is absolutely terrifying to drive up that street. You can't get by the barrels and you're stuck there. This, this situation is going to get even worse and will be faced with, with, a, with terrific safety problems. And this certainly should be addressed in some detail and should not be allowed to, should not be allowed to occur. Thank Thanks, you, Charlie. Um, and so, uh, Commissioner McGuinn, there is a transportation agreement or a transportation management agreement? Uh, uh, yes, Dale Temple, who represented the school, Carolyn Brown, who is the, their counsel. Um, and I uh, drafted a construction management um, agreement um, after the, I guess it was the April meeting, several, several uh, neighbors uh, said they really wanted to uh, to review it, make sure that everything was in it, that uh, several people had seen it, but not all. Um, so we tabled it. Uh, it was going to be voted on by the AMC, at, I believe the April meeting. Um, and more recently, um, there were a couple of comments from neighbors about um, items that could be included in that agreement. Uh, and I believe, at least several of them were, were indeed included. Um, as far as I believe the agreement has been finalized, uh, but we, it has not been signed. Um, the ANC could certainly endorse it. That would be wonderful. Um, I think that would be appropriate. Uh, we could even ask the BZA to, um, uh, to include it as a condition of the order. Um, commissioners saw the agreement back in April, and I think there's just one tiny item that has been added to it and has to do with um, providing contact information for whoever is going to be the school representative. I think that's the only, that's, that's the only thing that's been added. Uh, I was hoping to have it signed uh, in June um, and haven't gotten a response from the school about when we might be able to do that. So it's, it's waiting for signature and it's waiting for uh, whether the ANC wants to include it. And that's, and Dale Temple is the traffic management person. Uh, he, he is the, uh, the assistant to the head who, who was authorized to represent the school on negotiating the agreement along, along with their attorney, okay. the two of them. Well, um... The, uh, do we have any further public comment? Please use the raise hand feature. 
Oh, okay. Ms. Yemsi, I'm going to ask you to unmute. I assume you're, ra you're raising your hand, not using Thank the radio. Thank you. I'll just say that, um, look, uh, Dale was not the person who was designated as the traffic management person. He happens to be in our plan, but um, we, we are ready to work with whomever in the neighborhood, and we're here to just make this happen. It's, uh, it's tragic to me to hear that we've somehow created some, you know, I don't know, we've, we've created some adversity in the neighborhood and that doesn't seem right. We have been working so hard to make this work. And we are one of many schools in the neighborhood that are working with traffic issues and construction issues. And we have some specific neighbors that have decided that this isn't the right thing and I don't know what to do about it. They've decided that for whatever reason, maybe we're international or we're not the way they look that they've decided that should be, but we, uh, I'm disappointed by that. And we would like to see this go, go through. Um, and I see some, some, uh, I see the chat come in here tonight. It's like, I would love to know if there were traffic issues created by WISC, because we, I would love to work on that. I would love to like work with the neighborhood on what that is, but we, to my knowledge, we have not been hearing from neighbors on traffic issues, parking issues. If we heard those things, we would certainly work on those. And um, I see some neighbors here like shaking their heads and that's disappointing, but you know, well, I, I, my point is we're here to, here to work with the neighborhood. We, we, we work with kids, we work with families and our job is to do the best by the neighborhood. I, I would just ask that, you know, it's, it's probably helpful not to ascribe uh, potential motivations to, to folks, uh, you know, actions regarding traffic issues and things like that. But uh, I I'm, I'm apologize if I mispronounce your name, but Yogita, I'm gonna ask you to unmute. Thank you, can you hear me? Yes. Great, um, thanks for this opportunity. I consider myself quite international. We're a multilingual, multinational, multiracial family across from WIS. Um, and very supportive of, uh, in general, the international nature of the school. I would like to request that in any such construction agreement, I myself um, work in an international organization where we deal with many projects and environmental and social safeguards rank high in the requirements of any development of any project. So I would request that any construction agreement um, as this international standard, even in the poorest countries of the world, that we please make sure that there's appropriate community community consultation on um, environmental and social aspects. And let's also please make sure we're keeping track of things like pollution. Um, the John Eaton construction has left amazing debris. This is bad for the environment. This is bad for biodiversity. It's bad for the climate. So can we please make sure that we include all aspects related to pollution and uh, related? So I'm, you, I'm sure that the organizations involved can get hold of the best environmental and social safeguard standards that are used even in the most challenged environments. So in Washington, DC, capital of the United States, we should be able to do this. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, okay, so thank you all for your comments. Uh, commissioners, is there a discussion on the resolution at hand? Okay, well, I've got a, a question. Uh, or sort of a comment, Commissioner McWood. So in our April resolution, we talked about parking and said we the ANC 3C didn't really find an issue with parking. Uh, and it's not counter to what you're saying in this resolution, but it's sort of askew in a way. Uh, but I, I am swayed by Ms. Yemsby and Ms. Brown's points regarding uh, identifying cars. I think that that is uh, not very helpful. I don't think we should be identifying uh, children's vehicles. Uh, so I, I ask if you'd be willing to remove the uh, last whereas in your, uh, which um, the student car ID portion and that uh, you not speak on uh, uh, in favor of um, student car IDs. Um, before I say yes or no, <laughs> um, let me just just explain where where that came from um, and and why it's there and why um, quite a few schools um, 
had that requirement at one time or another. Um, part, part of a special exception for a private school is that they have to meet on-site parking requirements. And it's based on a, it's based on a formula. Um, and the, um, in uh, two, well, let me just back up a second. So it's, it, it, it's, it's based on a formula. And what many communities often um, argue to the BZA is, yeah, the formula is great. Uh, that's, um, uh, makes it easy to determine what the what what a school's on-site parking uh, number of spaces ought to be, but oftentimes, depending on the school, it may not really be adequate, and there's going to be spillover parking in the neighborhood. And the whole point of having the parking requirement is to avoid um, a negative impact on on the neighborhood. So, in the case. And as, as a result of that, in order to sort of demonstrate to the BZA, neighbors have gone to, to them and said, look, make the students have placards on their cars or stickers or whatever it might be so that it is demonstrable um, and you can document how many cars are actually parking in the neighborhood as opposed to parking on site and that either the parking requirement is inadequate or um, or it is adequate because there's no there's no incidence of student cars in the neighborhood that that is sort of the genesis of it it was to provide and, and it's not unique to us or to this case it was to provide additional demonstrable evidence to the bza about the parking requirement associated with the special exception in the case of WIS, um, it, it actually was somewhat, as far as we were concerned, the ANC was concerned back in 2007, we thought it was actually even more important at the time because um, WIS was not going to be meeting its parking requirement. Um, and it still isn't meeting its parking requirement. The BZA determined um, a couple of cases ago, I think, that uh, a certain number of spaces was going to be adequate for the school. And in 2007, I believe they, if I'm recalling correctly, they uh, sort of reiterated that they were going to stick with that um, number of spaces. And again, in this case, um, the school has requested and DDOT and the Office of Planning um, and indeed, the ANC have said uh, that's that's okay. You can you can stick with that number of, that number of spaces on site. Um, but here's here's the thing: if we're wrong, um, if we're endorsing something that is less than what the requirement is, um, in order to accommodate the school. Um, it seems to me that we sort of owe it to the neighborhood to say, you know, we're also very interested and concerned about the impact on you. So we're really gonna try to get this student ID requirement that, uh, that we recommended back in 2007 and that we thought was gonna be implemented. We are really gonna try to get that implemented so that if we're wrong, if they should be meeting their parking requirement, um, which every other school has to. I mean, I'm, I'm not aware of another school that I've worked with, and I've gotten worked with a number of independent schools where the BZA has allowed them not to meet their parking requirement, to have less than their parking requirement. So if we're, if we're wrong, um, it seems to me we owe it to the neighborhood to say, you're going to know, we're going to know, everybody's going to know if there is a significant or what the incidence of student parking in the neighborhood actually is. And, and WIS has testified that they would like to eliminate all student parking on campus. So where are those student drivers gonna go? Um, are they just no longer going to drive? This to me is, a, is not even a concession to the neighborhood. Um, it, it's almost, I, I think our obligation to the neighborhood that if we're going to say you don't have to meet your requirement with um, 
we have to do something for the neighborhood to demonstrate that um, that we made the right decision. Um, because if the school is not meeting, if the school is in fact having many more student drivers than it can accommodate on campus, and then we need to know that for the next zoning case. Okay, so um, so the, you're are not accepting the proposed amendment. I would like not to. I'd rather hear from more uh, more commissioners about that um, because I, I I really do feel that this is um, this is it, this is something this is a consideration to the neighborhood. Um, we've already given a consideration to the school by saying you don't have to meet your parking requirement. I think the quid pro quo for that for the neighborhood is and we'll have identifying marks on the, on, on the cars. So if indeed they are parking in the neighborhood and we've done something that really is harming you, wasn't our intention, but is harming you, we will try to reverse it in the future. I, I think that's only fair. Um, Commissioner um, Finley, I'd act, oh, sorry, go ahead, Commissioner. No, what I was going to propose is what if you took out student car ID and made it a WIS ID, um, it would be nice not to publicly target or have the illusion or impression that we're targeting students versus WIS's off street parking because it's a WIS issue, not specifically a student issue. And I think that takes the focus off of children because I don't think, and I think everybody would agree that none of us would want to be targeting children or students in any capacity in any forum being that it's an organizational issue not a specific student issue I, I i would absolutely agree to that i think that's appropriate and and the requirement has to do with faculty staff um and students so i i would agree with that uh commissioner finley i'd like to move to actually call the question and end debate Okay, is there a second? Commissioner uh, Paggetts? Yeah, I'll second. I saw you raise your hand, so I assumed you were. Well, I'm out. back. I'm, I'm set up. <laughs> Welcome back. Um, well, was that was that accepted? I just want to, yes. we called the question, but that's going to be, okay, thank you. So, Wait, so, was what accepted? Uh, Commissioner Reba proposed uh, a slight amendment to the last whereas clause to change student car ID to student car to WIS, um, and then removing or on student cars, I think. Although mm -hmm. I'll put words in Commissioner Reader's mouth. Taking, uh, uh, taking away the target on students versus institutional parking as it relates to off to street parking. So, so where, where, it says, where it says student car, uh, it would be WIS. Just replace the student with WIS. Do we, we have to vote on calling the question? Yes, yes we do. So uh, commissioners, uh, okay, so for those of you who are not sure what call to question means, that means ending debate and moving to the uh, voting on the resolution. Uh, so there, there'll be no further amendments to the resolution at hand. Uh, we would then just move directly to voting on it if the call to question passes. So um, all those in favor of calling the question, uh, Commissioner McWood's resolution, uh, Please uh, raise your hand, commissioners. Uh, okay, I see. I see Commissioner Reba, Commissioner Paggins, Commissioner Siddiqui, Commissioner McWood, and Commissioner Fink is raising his hand, uh, and uh, Commissioner Hoyt is as well. Um, and uh, uh, Lewis and Carol, I do see your hand up. Uh, we moved from public comment to back to commissioner discussion, and I, I appreciate uh, that you wanted to comment, and uh, I saw that you echoed Bonnie's comments earlier, and thank you for that. Okay, so the motion to call the question uh, is uh, successful. I'm going to ask for a roll call, Mr. Chairman. Sure, sure. Uh, roll call vote on call to question. Okay. Uh, no, 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 no. Oh, I thought we just voted oh. on call. <laughs> oh, okay. Sorry. Yes, and, and I guess technically. Not on that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. So, uh, Rachel, could you do the honors? This is on the resolution, right? Yes. Yeah, sorry. Yes. So, commissioners, we are voting on Commissioner McWood's resolution as amended. Uh, by Commissioner Reba, accepted by Commissioner McWood. 
And so that is, yes, that we're voting on that. So a yes is in support of the resolution, a no is opposition to the resolution. Can, can okay. people hear me? Please, please lower your hands now so that uh, so Rachel can get, get the right count. Uh, okay, Rachel. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Okay, sorry. Um, Commissioner Reba. Yes. Uh, hold on, I'm having a computer issue. Okay. Commissioner Fink. Uh, yes, for call to question. No, we're not on. No, we're oh, 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 uh, no. Okay. You already said yes. <laughs> uh, to call the question, no on the resolution. <laughs> Commissioner Paggetts. No. Commissioner Finley. Uh, no. Commissioner Siddiqui. No. Commissioner Hoyt. No. Uh, Commissioner Boucher and Gerson are absent. Commissioner McWood. Yes. Okay. Okay, so the resolution fails. Um, thank you, commissioners, and thank you folks for uh, being able to disagree without being disagreeable as President Obama asked us to do. Um, so we will move on to the next item in our, uh, oh, so what that means is the ANC is silent on uh, what VZ asked us to file. And uh, I believe Commissioner McWood's uh, letter that she filed on, 19th will be considered a uh, SMD letter. That's sure right. We'll okay. That's right. And so now we move to a uh, resolution from Commissioner Siddiqui. Uh, Commissioner Siddiqui, would you care to introduce your resolution? Sure. Um, thank you, Chair Finley. And in the interest of time, um, is it? A, I hope it's okay if I just read the resolve clauses. Um, I'm pasting a link to the resolution in the chat box. The resolution, um, I thank all the community members uh, that participated, uh, including the CPCA and all the commissioners who wrote me with comments. Um, I, some of them I received very late and I tried to address them to the best of my ability. Um, others that I have not addressed, uh, it doesn't mean that I uh, disagreed with them. I would, I would like to hear them right now. Uh, but again, in the interest of time, I will just be reading the resolved clauses. Um, Therefore, it be resolved that ANC 3C supports additional action to address the root causes of crime and police violence against Black communities and calls for the mayor and council to prioritize and invest in the safety and health of all DC communities, but especially in Black communities that have been historically, that historically seen under investment. Be it further resolved that ANC 3C supports the PRC, the Police Reform Commission report, recommendations to transfer from the Metropolitan Police Department, MPD, to the Department of Transportation, the authority to enforce traffic and vehicle regulations whose vi violation does not imminently threaten public safety, to ban jump outs and prohibit consent searches. Be it further resolved that ANC 3C supports making community competent behavioral healthcare professionals the default sole first responders to 911 calls involving individuals in crisis. Be it further resolved that a behavioral health police co-response model to be deployed district-wide only in situations where an individual is in crisis, has a weapon, or for some other reason poses a significant danger to others. Be it further resolved that ANC 3C supports further study by the mayor and council for the end of qualified immunity in the district and to create a deputy auditor for public safety within the office of the District of Columbia Auditor. Be it further resolved that ANC 3C supports dismantling the school policing infrastructure and replacing it with a holistic public health approach to school safety and crisis intervention that is relational, racially just, restorative, trauma responsive, and trauma informed. Be it further resolved that ANC 3C supports reducing the MPD force by at least the rate of attrition over the next five years and reducing M MPD overtime to the fullest extent possible and call on the mayor and representative Eleanor Holmes Norton to engage federal law enforcement agencies to increase their involvement and support in large first amendment activities and special events in the district. Be it resolved that the ANC authorizes all commissioners of ANC 3C to represent the commission on this matter. A uh, second. Thank you, Commissioner Siddiqui. Thank you, Commissioner Riva. Uh, commissioners, are th is there any discussion uh, there is, I, I do have one uh, friendly I'd like to make, if I may. Uh, first of all, Commissioner Siddiqui, thank you for um, engaging in my uh, feedback late this afternoon. I appreciated that. Uh, I apologize that I wasn't able to get back to your last email regarding the conversation surrounding the, world, the word dismantle. Uh, I needed to think about that. Um, 
I am more comfortable with the verbiage reducing with the goal of eventually eliminating, but I would probably prefer the word restructuring. Uh, restructuring brings a lot more flexibility to the discussion and the discussions that are currently happening between uh, the presenter from our June meeting and the MPD commission. Uh, there seems to be a healthy dialogue there. So if you would accept, I would like to flip out the word dismantle to restructuring with the goal of eventually eliminating. I think that allows a lot more flexibility and conversation to be had. Uh, so Commissioner Riva, and, and my apologies, I didn't get to your phone call. I was juggling like several things as well, but I appreciate you engaging. Um, so just to clarify, it would then say, be it further resolved that ANC3C supports restructuring with the eventual goal of eliminating. Well, I think what we were discussing was uh, it would read re restructuring with the goal of eventually eliminating goal of eventually eliminating. Okay. Um, yes, I would like to accept your friendly amendment and I will, I've updated it on the Google sheet, but I will also paste it over here in the okay. chat. Thank you. And thank you for mm -hmm. uh, tweaking the first whereas. I think that really speaks uh, broadly and uh, really speaks directly to what we're trying to accomplish, not only as a ANC, but as a city. So thank you for that. Okay, any other commissioners? Commissioner McWood? Yeah, I, I, um, uh, I, I, I'm really sort of troubled by the, by the, the resolution. Um, you know, I absolutely support the effort, support the commission. I introduced the resolution to the ANC uh, to create a commission. Um, and the the intention was not to um, not not to say that the the MPD is um, not to say anything specific, uh, frankly negative about the MPD, but to say that that every every police department in the country had a, a responsibility at that time. This was in June 2020. Um, to closely examine their their police force and their policies and their agreements and their procedures. Um, and that's why I felt very strongly about uh, the council and the mayor creating creating commission to look at it. Um, now that we've had the now that we've had the commission, um, I, 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 I feel that it is really important to make positive change. Um, and where we've got documentation and good um, awareness of what needs what needs to get changed. Uh, for for example, and some of the other things I am concerned are conclusory without a lot of linkages to to information. Um, and I worry that you know. 2D is, we are blessed with the, uh, with the exception of the recent incident at, at John Eaton School. Um, there was clearly a terrible incident outside National Stadium. Um, violence can happen anywhere, uh, but there are certainly parts of our city where violence is an everyday occurrence. Um, and that is not the case um, in 2D, which, which we are very fortunate about. So I just, I, I, I worry that we are um, launching into this in a way that sort of feels responsive, but may not be as responsible as, as we should be. Um, the first resolve, um, which talks about the root causes of police violence against black communities. I'm not sure if we're talking about the district and whether it has been um, where our documentation is for that. I don't doubt that there is abuse of power in black communities, but I think we need to be very careful and very responsive that we back up everything we say uh, with documentation. And if, if there is 
if there is a link in the police commission report about that, I would really like us to include it in the in the resolution. Um, I'm not sure that this is the resolution to be talking about other investments, uh, other programs in black communities. I totally support that, but I think that should probably be in a different resolution. Um, I support the second resolve. Uh, I support the third resolve, although I think they may have gone in different there may now be in a different order. I'm not quite sure why we would be calling for a deputy auditor for public safety within the um, the office of the DC auditor. I think um, it is council oversight responsibility to be uh, holding the police department's feet to the fire, making sure that they are providing documentation and data. Uh, and that there is enforcement and perhaps there needs to be additional legislation to create more um, public review bodies. Uh, but I'm not sure that the DC auditor is the right vehicle for doing that. Um, the, the resolve, which I think is number five about only having um, behavioral health professionals as the sole responders to 9-11 calls involving individuals in crisis. Um, the whereas refers to mental health crisis and I would like to see us reinsert mental health crisis. So there are a lot of different crises uh, that are represented in 9-11 calls. So I would like to see us be a little more specific because it's mental health crises that where that has really been pinpointed that um, having police respond to those is um, often leads to very terrible outcomes um, and that there are there are uh, well-qualified people who should be responding to those. The other is uh, I'm just perplexed why we would be asking for more federal police Commissioner McQuinn, when we're I asking for less local police. Um, um, proposed a number of amendments it sounds like. And, yeah. And uh, I, I think uh, you know it, I agree. I, you know what I would actually recommend because I think it's just I try responding to this. I, I would like to see us table this. I don't think there is any emergency that there's no timeline that requires us to do this. I think we're all very committed to doing this. I think it's it's very it's important to do it. Um, but and and I don't know if there's any support for doing that. Uh, but I particularly also looking at all the CPCA comments about it. Um, you know, I would like to see, uh, I would like to see us um, spend a little more time on this, but um, so knowing that Commissioner Siddiqui will probably not, not, not support that, um, let me throw it out there that, uh, that I would urge that we, that we table this. Well, I, I did ask, uh, Commissioner Siddiqui earlier to table this as well. Um, this is a rather um, important conversation to have. This is not a single member district issue. If we're going to be speaking on the overhaul and the change that we wish to see within the District of Columbia, uh, I think this demanded a broader conversation and a special committee within the ANC to have a dialogue so there could be collective inclusion and in research on what we are presenting this evening. Um, I, I too don't see the rush since we are all committed uh, to change. Um, I do want to share uh, that Commissioner Siddiqui, I'd like to make another friendly amendment that where you reference black, it really should be black or brown. Um, that is what's most appropriate. Uh, those are the communities that are impacted on uh, what's expressed in this resolution. It's just not black communities, it's black and brown communities. So what I would urge you to um, fix that in the second whereas and elsewhere within the resolution where you just referenced black. I think that's also in the, um, yeah, I wanna say it's in the second whereas um, but I think it's somewhere else in the resolution. I don't have it up in front of me. It, it's taken a minute to pull up, but I would ask you to, uh, uh, to, to make that change. Thank you. I think it's also in the first resolve where you mentioned, especially in black communities, but it's black and brown communities that have historically seen underinvestments. And I think that's prevalent throughout social media on the internet 
and uh, in various articles across the country. Um, Mr. Siddiqui, uh, yeah, you've got a lot to respond to. Yes. Yeah. Um, first, uh, Commissioner McWood, um, thank you for proposing, introducing the resolution last year. Um, I actually, it was inspired by your resolution that, um, that I chose to further this and, and not just me, but I think, you know, we as a commission sort of had a presentation and discussion last meeting, um, and then we had it this time. I do humbly say that I would like us to vote on this today, uh, only because I think we've had chance for discussion and I'd, I, I would have loved if we had, um, you know, all of us more time for discussion and, and stuff, but, um, but council is talking about this right now. Uh, Commissioner McWood, one of the things you mentioned about the auditor, uh, Phil Mendelson just introduced a bill related to that. Um, as well. So it's it, it, the time, you know, I, I know that us as ANCs, we can try and do a lot and we can, you know, do that. But I'd rather us, I, I'd rather at least like us be proactive in this um, than reactive. Uh, Commissioner McCord, I actually think you had really good suggestions. And I'm, I'm you know, I, I tried to get the ones that, that were explicit and I could get through. I think the addition of the word mental health crises, um, I, have, I have actually added that. So I'll accept that friendly amendment. Um, I think the, the other one about um, sort of the federal one, I can see how that can go one direction that was proposed uh, by another commissioner. And I'm, I'm open to discussion for that, but I think that kind of helps put into context some of the stuff about how MPD is unique in, in DC and uh, it has to deal with so many of the larger issues. Um, and Commissioner Riva, just to respond to you as well. Um, yes, I totally got your email and I would love to have a committee that we all work together on this. Uh, but like I said, I, I think at this point, I do prefer us if we do vote on this. Um, and But I will accept your edit for black and brown um, only because I think, uh, you know, while I, I do think the uh, police violence has been perpetrated against black communities, uh, primarily in DC, I think uh, brown communities have also been um, a target of that as well. Uh, and I, th I think I'll say one final thing about the comments from the CPCA, uh, and I, you know, I, I see, uh, I see Barr is here, uh, yes, and and some other CPCA members are here, and it'd, it'd be great to hear from them as well. Um, but you know, I think one of the things was that one of the back and forth we had was the some of the language in the beginning that that seems very strong was actually from the resolution last year. Um, mm -hmm. It's not from this resolution. Um, if you look at the resolves that are in the second page, that's the new portion, and that's the part um, that we're voting on today. And I, you know, I. I sort of considered the discussion we had. I, I picked everything from the report. Commissioner McWood asked me to cite everything from each page. I went back and added those citations. Um, I really like really tried to make sure that um, that I get all the input. But again, I'm always open for more input. And Commissioner McWood, if you did want to make other specific suggestions, I'm, I'd be fine with that. I'm also okay if, if you do not want to support the resolution in this form as well. Okay. Um, would, would you be willing to delete the the uh, the portion of the resolve talking about more um, federal policing at demonstrations, First Amendment rights. I mean, I think that's that is um, that it, I, I mean, certainly if it's if it's warranted, there is nothing that uh, would prevent um, the mayor from requesting that. But doing it as a regular thing I think is rather provocative um, and I think it's uh, it, demonstrations is where we want to have we want to have peace and we want the we want the police departments uh, and law enforcement whoever is in enforcing safety um, in those uh, at those events um, Asking for federal forces for all of those all of those events seems to me just uh, going in the wrong direction. Um, but the other thing I I would add because it's also in the same it's in the same resolve, uh, which I think is probably the most controversial thing in in the resolution is to reduce MPD forces the rate of attrition over the next five years um, and reducing MPD over. Reducing M MPD over time to the full extent possible, I don't really have a problem with that. Uh, reducing the police force by the rate of attrition in the next five years. What I what I worry about there is, do we really do we really know the numbers of where that would take us? Do we know how it would change the allotment of uh, police police coverage? 
Um, in the past, I know the number of officers, and I'm not sure whether MPD still does it this way, but in the past, they did it on the basis of calls for service. So in areas that had um, the need for more policing, they got more police officers, and particularly if there were violent crimes. So an area like ours, um, if there were if there was a, a big reduction in the police force, uh, we we would probably see a significant reduction um, because we don't have the level of crime that some other parts of the city unfortunately see. So I'm just wondering what your thinking was as to what the impact of that would be on 2D. So. I will respond to the last thing. Uh, I think the first thing you're saying, I'd be open to that. I'd, I'd ask other commissioners how they felt about the federally thing. I mean, I can see your point on there. Um, so I'd, I'll ask other commissioners if they're okay with that. I'm, I'm open to going that, going to just over time if, if that's something the commission is comfortable with. On the other hand, in 2D, um, I do have to say this is a little bit of a personal issue for me as well. Um, the most scared I have ever been in my home is when twice the police showed up to my door um, and knocked and very aggressively knocked very aggressively. And I was in bed both times. Luckily I didn't go to the door. Um, my wife talked to them one time. They even, um, were very aggressive and were talking about how our doors weren't closed in the proper way or something. And both times this was because someone had complained that we were making noise, even though our apartment was completely silent and completely just not there. Uh, just, there's no noise at all. I was in bed, like I said. Um, so, and I know that, you know, the, the point of Commissioner Wood, your point is like, well, you know, data, and, and I agree with data. I mean, I'm a data person, I'm a data scientist. I, um, but I also want to say the fact that if we think 2D um, is immune to some of these things, I do not think that's true. No, no. And, I, and, I, and I don't think, and I don't think we should be just thinking of 2D as well, um, as in one of the emails that I actually also had uh, ICC bar on there. Um, we as ANCs have to, you know, we take an oath to do best for the city as a whole. Um, so I think just thinking about 2D uh, shouldn't be our goal. It would be great to think about 2D, but honestly, there's not, you know, I've been trying to find data on, um, on how much MPD spends on our district versus other districts. And, and you know, what is the spending? And, and it's, it's, very, it's very difficult to find, very difficult to parse. But one thing I, I genuinely do believe in is that um, the rate of attrition is a good measure for, for talking about reduction of a police force. It's not an extreme measure, it's an explicit measure. And that's what the Police Reform Commission report said as well. Uh, now, that being said, again, if the, if the commission is not comfortable with this, um, I am open to, uh, I'm open to removing that. But I, you know, again, I, I would like us to rethink this as well and just think about um, how this impacts us, but also how it impacts uh, the entire city. No, and I agree with that. Um, I think we do have to look at the city as a whole. And that's, that is one of the things that I'm concerned about because I know in some other parts of the city where they do have a lot more crime, unfortunately, um, they, it, there's a difference of opinion. I mean, some people feel very strongly that they don't want police force uh, to be reduced. I, I, I think rather than sheer numbers, it's behavior we're talking about and it's training um, and it's appropriate responses for, um, for the, the event that's being responded to. Um, and it's not, and it's, it's handling abuse of authority. Um, uh, you know, there, there are certainly officers probably in, M I'm sure in MPD that shouldn't be there and we ought to get rid of them. Um, attrition may not be the way to address that. I just don't, I, I just don't know. Um, so I, I, I would totally agree with the part about the, about the overtime, if you and other commissioners would agree, um, that would make me more comfortable so that I could support the resolution because there are many things in the resolution that I do support. Um, I will, uh, I will, remove the rate of attrition language. I'll accept that friendly amendment, Commissioner McWood. Um, and if other commissioners don't have objections to removing the language on federal, um, the, the rest of the part of, uh, here, here, let me actually read that. Um, so I would also be okay removing and call on the mayor and Representative Ellen Holmes Norton to engage federal law enforcement agencies 
to increase their involvement and support in large First Amendment activities and special events in the district. Um, I'd be open to removing that as well, but I also want to hear from other commissioners if they have any objections to removing that. Hey, uh, so I had think yeah. hey, uh, that was my idea. So basically that just means that like for large Capitol Hill or like downtown DC, First Amendment protests or things, we're not talking about federal forces like the National Guard, but like federal law enforcement agencies to help with some of the logistics of these events. Uh, I kind of, I want to kind of like the Women's March or um, the, uh, you know, the anti-gun, uh, uh, anti-gun uh uh, protests ha that happened after the shooting uh, in South Florida in 2000, I believe it was 18. I, th I think it was, and I think that's like a totally reasonable uh, request being in like the, the federal areas of this, the district um, to ask for support. And, and that definitely will help with the overtime because the over, like the, when there's these large scale First Amendment events in downtown DC, MPD, you know, definitely goes on to overtime um, so they can cover all the areas of the city. So I can see that, Jason. How about what if we said, um, instead of federal law enforcement, but if we say uh, you could say law enforcement. You could say regional and federal law enforcement partners. I mean, I'm just, how about regional federal? Know. How about regional federal partners to support MPD activity so that we remove I would say the public safety. I would say public safety partners, but it's like I'm trying to just like narrow it down, like in terms of because uh, the whole point of it is to take the load off MPD. Right. So. And and I'm trying to figure out a way to do that. Oh, go ahead. And well, why don't you say in the federal precinct? Because if, right. according fine. to what Jason said, we're talking about uh, Capitol Hill and the White House, and um, yeah. by no means, there would be appropriate no means. to have federal forces, and frankly, it, it's authorized now. Um, so, so, Nancy, my thing is that I, I, no reason do I want federal forces like at the Palisades Parade. I mean, this is more like the stuff that happens downtown. Like the Park Service police helping with the Park Service permit <laughs> stuff. Commissioner McWood's uh, federal precinct covers that, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Yeah. I, I would be okay with that. So, um, so commissioner, so I'll, I'll remove the reduce the rate of attrition um, supports, uh, and let me paste the new verbiage in the chat. Uh, be it further resolved that ANC 3 supports reducing MPD overtime to the fullest extent possible and call on the mayor and Representative L. Holmes Norton to engage federal law enforcement agencies to increase their involvement and support in large First Amendment activities and special events to the federal precinct. Yeah. Happy yeah. to edit. Okay. That does cool. it for me. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Chairman. I, I didn't have anything. No. Um, I, I think that it was an elegant solution to the federal law enforcement issue, Richard McCord. Uh Commissioner Baggett, did, did oh, I'm sorry, did you? I saw you unmuted. And... No, I'm good. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Any other commissioners? Any discussion? Um, I'm wondering, it was me uh, reading out loud to myself. I'm wondering if we should use the verbiage of National Public Safety Partnerships, which is a program created by local and tribal law enforcement. Um, I don't know if that helps. I know we came up with something that seems agreeable, but I just wanted to, um, I liked where Jason was going when we referenced federal agencies and uh, law enforcement partners. Um, I kind of liked that maybe it's tomato, tomato, but I wanted to throw that out, um, to engage federal agencies and law enforcement partners. Federal agencies and law enforcement partners. Um, I mean, I know this is my resolution, but since we're all talking about this collectively, how do others feel about that? Jason? Commissioner McWood? Can you repeat that? Sorry. 
So uh, Commissioner Riva said that instead of saying engage federal law enforcement agencies, Commissioner Riva, uh, you said engage federal agencies and law enforcement partners and law enforcement partners. That sounds wonderful. Isn't that the same thing? It is, but I'll let well, it have it. I mean, it depends how you read it. Federal law enforcement agencies, it's different between agencies and partners. There's law enforcement partners and those within the federal agency umbrella. Just trying to find something you like, Nancy. <laughs> Something that you I, I, I was satisfied. <laughs> fine. Okay. Well, I okay. Well, I like federal agencies and law enforcement partners. Okay. It's it's probably it's probably fine um, because I don't see a distinction. Yeah, I don't think there's a difference. I, I will accept it, Commissioner Reba, since you made it in the interest of uh, acceptance. Um, okay. Uh, Jason, I saw you in the chat. You were saying, can we not just talk about schools? Um, uh, first, uh, let me, let me post in the chat again, uh, the new version of the resolution as it's being updated live. Um, Jason, I, I want to push back on that because I actually think schools is a very important thing. And it was also highlighted in the police reform commission report. Um, I know that it can be, you know, something that's, um, and I don't want to use, again, I don't want to use the word controversial, but I, 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 you know, I understand that it, it, it's a way deeper issue that, of course, we can handle or anything else can handle. But I, I genuinely, when I read the report, when I look at the research out there, um, police free schools is something good to strive for. And I actually appreciated Commissioner Riva's um, edit, which kind of made it more towards like, let's reduce with the eventual goal. Um, and sorry, restructure with the eventual goal. Um, so that's why I, I, I do think we should include that in this, um, in this resolution. But um, please note that when I shared that, I think I sent you an email earlier about the um, bullet holes in the windows of UDC's uh, branch campus, uh, Old Congress Heights off MLK Avenue, where any given day, a student, faculty, or staff member could be hit by a flying bullet. Yes. So, that's what concerns me in uh, dismantling uh, school police infrastructure versus restructuring. Restructuring leaves the dialogue open for high risk targeted areas. Jason, would you be more comfortable with, with uh, reducing rather than dismantling? Well, we got rid of dismantling. We got rid now of it dismantling. Says, oh. Now it says restructuring with the- okay. Uh, I, I can read it again. Um, restructuring with the goal of eventually uh, eliminating. Oh, wait. Nancy, we yeah. replaced the word dismantle hey. with restructuring. So I would be okay with like examining or like doing a study about it, but I think that like every school is different and there's okay. different parts of the city that has different needs. And you can't take like a one approach to all the schools in DC in terms of like the like MPD involvement. And I know that like MPD involvement can come in different layers and different sizes, but I feel like we would be naive to think that every school could needs the same thing. Exactly, I agree. So you just want to get rid of eventually eliminating and make that a little bit more open ended. Would that work? Yeah, that would work. I mean, or like examining and yeah, that would work. That's a good compromise. Or, or how about if we say evaluating? ANC the sports examining school specific restructuring with the goal of eventually eliminating. Oh, but I think the goal of el eventually eliminating is the part that Jason's still objecting to. And that's the part that I want to push back on a little bit. Um, yeah. Because <laughs> I, I do I do genuinely believe in school free school, uh, police free schools. I think it's something students deserve, but I also am hearing um, lots of other stuff. Is there 
if there's a way we can keep the idea of keep the dream of police free schools in the resolution um and no I, I don't I like it's, it's not that i'm against police free schools i just think that like some schools like need are gonna have to have some sort of higher levels of security than other schools in the, in the, in, in the city and but i am i'm all in favor of like you know an, an overhaul and a discussion and to debate you know of changing you know the structure and school resource officers and that sort of thing but okay. i also think it's a school i also think like, and this is something that's been going on with dcps is like it's a school by school decision i think almost in terms of like what their needs are and like you know ideally we'd like there not to be no police at all at some of the schools but you know that's not the case at dc uh, I don't think the way it's currently written, Commissioner Siddiqui, that uh, what Commissioner Fink just said is that it, it disagrees with what Commissioner Fink just said, especially since you wrap it up with replacing it with a holistic public health approach to school safety and crisis intervention. Uh, that doesn't preclude police involvement. Uh, you're just talking about changing the current school resource officer and police presence into something um, more holistic into something more relational, racially just, restorative, etc. So I think uh, right. I think, so you're yeah. so what you're saying, Commissioner Finley, is that even if we eliminate school policing infrastructure, a holistic public health approach could still include police. Yes, and and I think you know that option of police needs to be be there. I mean, you can't have uh, a. a Obviously, it's a last resort, and in many cases, one of the, when I think one of the reasons you're bringing this into the resolution is because police are too often seen as a, as the first line of dealing with with someone who who's having behavioral issues uh, rather than the last line. Uh, so, I don't think what Commissioner Fink is saying um, is countered by what you already have. I think that it, it, what you're what you've written here is actually is supportive of what he is hoping for. If I may, what if that resolve read that 3C supports evaluating school policing infrastructure and potentially replacing it with a holistic public health approach? I couldn't vote for that resolution. Yeah, I wouldn't vote for that one. Um, I, I am comfortable, if commissioners are really worried about this, I'm comfortable eliminating the words, uh, eliminating. Sorry about my dog. I'm comfortable removing the words goal of eventually eliminating. So supports restructuring the school policing infrastructure, replacing it with the plus, uh, holistic public health approach. I'm okay with that. Supports restructuring yeah. school police infrastructure and replacing. Yes. Good. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Commissioner Fink. Thank you, Commissioner Riva. Thank you, Commissioner McWood. Thank you, Commissioner Finley. Supports restructuring the school policing restructuring. I think you need to take out the word the after restructuring. Okay, done. Accepted friendly grammatical amendment. Policing <laughs> infrastructure and replacing it with guts. Okay, reads good. If there are no other comments, um, Commissioner Finley, maybe we can ask if anyone from the public wants to comment. Yes, exactly. Okay, so commissioners, are we are we done uh, editing Commissioner Siddiqui's resolution for now? Yeah. Reserving the right to do so after public comment. Uh, okay, folks, you, you've heard how we do this. Uh, hopefully, uh, please, if you have comments, click the reactions button, which is a smiley face with a little plus sign on it if you're on a computer, and choose the raise hand feature, click raise hand, and then uh, we'll call on you and ask you to unmute. And so uh, now is the, the summer of our public comment. It's a barren summer. Oh, okay, Barr. Hi, hi, can you hear me? Yes, sir. I think I pressed the wrong hand, but it was the best one I could find. Um, I don't have a lot to say. You saw our comments um, a couple of days ago. I just wanted to say I really appreciate the effort you're all making to uh, hear each other and hear, hear comments from us. I think the, uh, the resolutions is significantly improved in, in, from my perspective. And I can't speak for CPCA in any, any serious way because we're just kind of acting quickly on this, but I think it's 
um, I, I actually feel more comfortable with it and I really appreciate the effort of the ANC to, to think things through tonight. So thank you very much. Thank you. Anyone else? You can click raise hand or if you want to turn your video on and wave frantically, you can do that. So we'll see you. All right. So no further public comment. We'll move back to resolution. Uh, commissioners, is there any further discussion? I move to a vote. All right, you, you, you don't need to do that, but uh, <laughs> okay, if there's no further discussion, we'll, we'll move to a vote. Can we have a roll call, please? Certainly. Rachel, would you do the honors? The vote is on the resolution that Commissioner Sadiqa presented as amended by many commissioners on this call. Give me just a second, okay. Um, and Commissioner Siddiqui, real quick, you have not, uh, it looks like in your draft, you have not made uh, Mr. Reba's initial suggestion of adding black and brown. Can yeah, I haven't, I haven't done that one yet. I just want to go through and, and do that. Um, but I, I think I will do it only in the place where we don't say Black Lives Matter. Um, wherever other place we use Black communities, I'll, I'll add brown to it. Thank you. Okay, you ready? Ma'am. We are. <laughs> um, Commissioner Reba. Proudly, yes. Commissioner Fink. Uh, yes. Commissioner Paggetts. Yes. Uh, Commissioner Finley. Yes. Commissioner Siddiqui. Yes. Commissioner Hoyt. Yes. Um, Commissioner McWood. Yes. Okay. Okay. And so the resolution passes unanimously. Congratulations, Commissioner, Commissioner Siddiqui, and thank you for bringing that resolution up. Uh, we now will move to uh, other business. Uh, the first order of other business is the Secretary's report. Uh, Commissioner Reba. Uh, thank you. The minutes were distributed. Uh, everybody reviewed, uh, provided feedback. So at this time, I'd like to uh, make a motion to uh, introduce our minutes from our May 17th meeting. Excuse me, our June 21st meeting. Forgive me. For a second. Second. Thank you, Mr. Siddiqui. Okay, all those in favor of approving Secretary Reba's, uh, well, first, is there any discussion on the minutes? Okay, hearing none. Uh, all those in favor of Commissioner Reba's minutes that he circulated, please raise your hand. Okay, I see. Two, three, four, five. Uh, do we have Commissioner Did McWood? Did we lose Fink? It looks like we lost Commissioner Fink and Commissioner McWood. We still uh, have quorum? We, we still have quorum. Okay, because I need it for the treasurer's report too, so. <laughs> Adam's hand is raised. I see that. Thank you, Commissioner Hoyt. Um, okay, so the minutes pass. Uh, thank you, Secretary Reba. All right, next up, treasurer's report. Commissioner Siddiqui. Yes, um, I believe I sent the FY21 um, second quarter and third quarterly um, uh, quarterly financial reports to the commissioners, and I also attached appropriate documentation. Um, I would like to move to approve both uh, quarterly financial reports. Okay, is there a second? I'll second. Great, thank you. Okay, is there any discussion? Okay, hearing none. All those in favor of uh, QFR, FY21, Q2, and Q3 reports as presented by uh, Commissioner Siddiqui, please raise your hand. Right. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you, Treasurer Siddiqui. Okay, and now we will move to single member district reports, which should be rather quick because we've got a skeleton crew this evening. Uh, <laughs> Commissioner Reba, could you kick us off? Thank you. Um, there are no updates within the Woodley Park Commercial District 
on the east side of Connecticut Avenue uh, regarding the National Zoo uh, on June 30th. The Smithsonian approved an increase in the amount of visitors to the zoo that they can emit daily. And they're also increasing their building capacity as well. Uh, I want to report that they're making incremental adjustments while focusing on exhibit lines, crowd flow, and safety, as well as the overall experience. Uh, the capacity as of June 30th is 10,000 visitors per day. Um, I will share that the highest daily attendance so far since reopening has been approximately 6,800 visitors. It's a little lower during the weekdays. Uh, their attrition rate continues to be above 35%. Uh, they haven't reached their capacity of 10,000 passes a day just yet, but that number is generally impacted on weather and other um, elements. So uh, wanted to report out that the National Zoo has increased their capacity um, as of June 30th. Um, I want to alert my constituents, um, and I'm sure all of you probably do as well, that as of July 1st, DPW um, has started um, uh, ticketing and enforcing uh, booting, and residents should adhere to all posted parking signs and pay the meters for the time they intend to park. Uh, I've gotten a lot of questions regarding uh, the disparity between the Connecticut Avenue reversible lane not changing, as well as how that impacts um, parking, parking enforcement uh, as such. So um, July 1st was the district-wide uh, booting uh, and ticketing. Um, I just want to get that out there. Uh, let's see. I want to, I'm just checking my notes, so please forgive me. Um, I also want to just share that uh, Metro will be starting to expand train service to midnight, seven days a week, starting July 18th. So those residents that are looking to go out and enjoy the city's offerings in terms of movies and events such as National Stadium, whatnot, there will be full uh, rail service and uh, that includes bus routes as well. Uh, the last thing I want to share, because I've gotten a lot of phone calls, is the um, item regarding the temporary closure of Beach Drive uh, that started this week. Uh, Beach Drive Northwest between Shoreham Drive and Tilden is going to be closed between 10 a.m. and 3 p.m from July 12th this past week through December 20th. Uh, the closer, closing is necessary to construct the new pedestrian bridge and multi-use trail on Beach Drive over Rock Creek Park as part of the Rock Creek Park multi-use trail and pedestrian bridge project. Uh, that concludes my report. Thank you, Chairman Finley. Thank you, Commissioner Reba. Uh, Commissioner Fink, are you still you're still with us? Would you like to give it an update on your SMD? Okay, we'll come back to you. Commissioner Packets, you're up. Sure. And I can probably uh, help him a little bit with his. So the Wamata Tunnel Vent Pilot Project kicked off on Saturday. Um, so that's the <clears throat> um ventilation pilot project to improve the safety on the red line between Cleveland Park and Woodley Park. Um, it's supposed to go on 24 seven from mid July through the end of August. So there's going to be, you know, single tracking and like long head times and all of that fun stuff. Um, hopefully it gets done on time and schedule. And I know that WMATA has also been notifying um, buildings along the, the area that are going to be impacted for their sidewalks being torn up at certain times. Um, so I know they've notified my building at the very least. Uh, so just be aware of that happening over the next um, few months slash possibly into spring of next year. 
Thank you, Commissioner Packett. So yes, uh, I kind of want to double down and mention that uh, the uh, tunnel ventilation project that's starting, uh, it started this past weekend. There's continuous signal tracking between DuPont and Van Ness. Trains are operating every 18 minutes between uh, Shady Grove and Glenmont. Uh, the, uh, for weekends of August 7th and 8th and August 28th and 29th, uh, Cleveland Park and Woodley Park stations will be closed. Uh, there will be a free shuttle buses between DuPont and Van Ness uh, for folks who need to take Metro in that way, um, uh, those directions. So yeah, so that's uh, that's it. I guess I'll, I'll keep it short. Um, and then I know that they want to, they're suggesting that folks take the L2 along Connecticut, but I was wondering if we have any status update on the L1 from them yet. I don't believe we do, but that's a, a good- That's uh, a good, yeah, question if we should see. Commissioner Finley, can you go over those dates again? Certainly, I'm, I'll actually, I'll, I'll throw them in the chat because I'll be easier, I guess. Thank you. You're welcome, thanks for asking. Um, make sure you get in those minutes, I guess, yeah. Uh, so the, the um, to the uh, Transparency Rules and Bylaws Committee uh, will be meeting. So we do not have an ANC meeting in August, but the uh, Transparency uh, Rules and Bylaws Committee will be meeting on, sorry, I've got to pull up my calendar, on August 19th, which is a Thursday at 7 p.m. And that uh, notice will go out on the Cleveland Park Listserv, uh, as well as on our website uh, once all the Zoom information is, is ready and the agenda. Um, may I use your um, your ch your chat as part of the minutes since this oh, is a little more detailed? I, I just took it from uh, from Wamata's email. About yes. it. Yeah. I will use. It. I, I I don't I won't claim authorship. Yeah, I was trying to sum it up from there, and he he went and read it in the full detail. Yeah. <laughs> hey, big time on that, um, and that wraps up my SMD report, uh, Commissioner Siddiqui. Um, I will once again talk about Hearst Park and Pool construction because I will not stop talking about it because it is just ridiculous. Uh, even though there's been some progress on the construction moving, what hasn't changed is the lack of transparency um, from district agencies. So uh, community is still very frustrated. Um, everyone is trying their best as Mary Che, as I mentioned last in, in our last uh, meeting, Mary Che has written to the mayor. Uh, but we are still not getting as much transparency and it will definitely not be completed in my opinion before the summer is over. Um, the, other, the only other thing I wanted to point out, uh, mention was Park DC just launched a new visitor parking permit uh, mechanism, um, which you have to go into the system and put your address in there and then you can apply for a visitor parking pass or not apply, but even just print out a visitor parking pass for anyone who's visiting you. However, I know there are whole addresses that are missing from that system. And in fact, whole buildings from my SMD are missing from that system. So, and, in, and the police stations aren't printing uh, parking passes anymore. So if people have visitors coming in, um, just re I've reached out to uh, DDOT about this um, well, and still haven't gotten a response about what's happening. All I've heard is that uh, the system is being updated as we speak. Um, so hopefully we get this resolved soon. So can you print them at the library or like, what if you don't have a printer? No, so so you can print them at the library. The the, the, the real issue is you have to get into the system. And if yeah, your building is I not will. in the system, it doesn't matter if you have a printer or not, so. But the disappointment so, when you get into the system and you don't have a printer is also overwhelming. <laughs> yes, uh, I, I'm sure many millennials will be very upset at that, so. Catch. so um, Commissioner Siddiqui, has there been any any resolutions been identified or is this is a just an ongoing issue? It seems to me it's an ongoing issue. They're saying they're okay. updating the database, so. Okay. And Arlene and Sheldon Holden point out that it is very hard to use the parking pass system. And I, I have, <laughs> I've heard many complaints about it. Um, so, Thank you all for your updates. Um, we have lost quorum. What about Commissioner Hoyt? He does not appear to be on the call. Okay. And Maureen Boucher is not here. No, but Commissioner Boucher is in Hawaii. And Commissioner Gearston is gone. Okay. So no reports for six, seven, eight, and nine. Correct. Okay. Thank you. Or, or two. Um, or two, correct. Thank you. Okay. 
So uh, we don't have quorum, so I don't think I can actually formally ask for a motion to adjourn, but I will just to, because I'm a completist. Is there a motion to adjourn? Yes, motion to adjourn. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. All right, yeah. that is, everybody, we will see you in September if you don't come to the August uh, Rules and Bylaws meeting. Thank you all for joining and have a great rest of your evening. Thanks, have a good night. Thank you, bye. Thank you.